Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this card. I'll start off with the card pieces. You'll need two pieces of pink pirouette which measure four and a half by five and a half inches. I'll explain to you in a moment why I've only got one sheet there but you do need two. Um, and that is 12 by 14 centimetres. You need a piece of crumb cake that measures 4 inches by 4 and 3 quarter inches, which is 10 by 12 centimetres. A piece of pink pirouette, which is 3.5 by 4.5 inches, which is 9 by 12. A piece of whisper white, which measures 3 inches by 4 inches, which is 8 by 10. Another piece of whisper white, which measures 4.5 by 5.5, which is 12 by 14 centimetres. A scrap of Whisper White for the sentiment, a scrap of Pink Pirouette for the layer and a piece of DSP which measures 3 inches by 4 inches which is 8 by 10 centimetres. This I've taken from the Love Blossoms Designer Series paper stack. Right, the reason um, I'm only showing you one piece here is because I've already got my two oval, uh, scalloped oval shapes and the reason I had these is when I was going through my um, folder the other day I found that in the pink pirouette folder I had ten of these, I have no idea why um, but there were ten and I thought I'd better get those used up um, no good keeping them if I'm not going to use them so I've made two cards so far, I'll show you the other one uh, once I've finished this will be the third card which means I've got another four left which is great, I can make another two cards. But I will just go through the motions with you. Um, obviously I'm not going to cut one of those. Most of the work is going to be done by the Big Shot. So I'll bring that in first. Right, um, I'll start off with my magnetic platform. Right, if I leave that there you can follow what it is I'm doing. Um, to cut all the ovals I'm going to use the Ovals Collections Framelit dies and the largest one is the scalloped one and that's what I'm calling number seven. I'm also going to use four, five and six. I always start counting mine from the inside. The smaller the number, the smaller the die. I hope it's nice and easy to remember by saying it like that. So the first thing you need to do is to take your two pieces, one at a time, and die cut two scallops over like that. Okay? Obviously I'm not going to do it because mine are already done. So, if I can move over a little bit, then you can see both sides here. Alright, so that's what I've done, that's what I'm aiming for, and this is what I'm doing. So there's that one, and then number six is going to be the crumb cake. Just push that through. Okay, so that's the uh, crumb cake layer. And then I need the pink pirouette, which will be number five. So there's that one. And then we need the white one for the small piece. 
So this is all for the front of the card. Right, so that's no one more oval to do and this is the one for the inside and I'm going back to number six for this. This is the largest um, straight oval, straight as in not scalloped. Let's see. This is um, an easy way to save a bit of uh, cardstock if you put those on tilted and then you've got extra bits there for like the sentiment and such like. Okay, that's that. Oh, there is one more as well. So that's for the inside. And then what we need is this one, which goes behind the top one. So that's the smallest size, which we said was four. Five, six, seven. Yeah, this is number four. Right, okay, so that's all my ovals cut. So the next thing I need to do is to emboss two of the layers. So I need to get this platform in. On my um, Big Shot I need to take both tabs off for my dry embossing. Most people are able to leave that one on. Um, but my machine doesn't like that. So the embossing folder I'm using is the uh, fluttering, which is the butterflies, which is that one there. With this, um, these card, these pieces of cardstock that we're doing, um, they're just going to be the layers. So. All that we're going to be seeing is what's on the outside, uh, which is why I say you need a um, an all-over design. Okay, so just pop that in there, and this is a big uh, folder. So make sure that it fits on nicely onto your uh, platform, and make sure you put the fold into the machine first as well. Okay, so that's the butterflies. And I also need to do the crumb cake piece as well. So again, put the fold in first, sandwich between two cutting plates and make sure it's all tucked in. on that one as well. And the last thing we need to do is on our smallest white oval and I'm going to change my platform again and I'm going to use the, um, in fact no I'm not going to change it, I will use this one but I just close all the tabs up and I'm going to use my precision plate. So I'll put my oval there and I'm going to use this to cut the rose. Now the rose comes from the Rose Garden Thinlets 
dies and I'm going to use the single rows here now if you remember with this die um, the cutting edge is right on the outside of the metal so what you see here is where it's going to cut so the important thing is to remember not to allow the edges anywhere to touch the edge on your oval otherwise you're going to find that your oval will break you can go close but not too close right I'm having a look see where I had this set before as you can see I went quite close here and that side but not too close uh, I think that should be alright. Right, just one cutting mat when you're using the um, precision base plate. So, that's quite tough to get it through. And I'm just going to push it backwards and forwards twice. should have cut it beautifully. Yes, lovely. Let's just push those into the bin. Don't need that. Retrieve my crumb cake piece that fell on the floor. Move this one out of the way. Um, yes, we have finished with it now. Okay, so these are all my pieces. This is my rose. If I need any help, I'm not going to try and push it because I want to show you this. This is the uh, Sizzix um, die brush and it is absolutely super. So if you put your die down so that you've got the um, cutting blade facing down and then you just roll over like this and the brush just goes into the little holes and pushes all the bits out. This is just absolutely brilliant. There we go. How lovely is that? So we don't need those pieces. Move that out of the way now as well. Won't need that. Right, so where do we start? I think what we'll do is first of all put our card together and move those out of the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to score a line across here and that's going to be our opening. I'm going to, once I've scored it, we're just going to glue that top bit there. Okay, so that will be opening and closing. Now how I decide to do this is I put the top scallop and the bottom scallop on this centre line of my grid paper and to make sure that I've actually got it correct what I do is I measure this line here let me bring this down so that you can actually see there we go so this line here off to the side if you follow that up that goes up to two and a quarter halfway between the two and that line there so that's two and a quarter and it should do the same on this side so that line there goes up to two and a quarter, halfway between the two and that line. So I know that I'm correct. Now what I'm going to do is, that's my top scallop and I'm going to count down four. So that's my top one, one, two, three, four, and I'm putting a little pencil mark in between those two scallops and I'm going to do the same this side. So that's my top scallop one, two, three, four, and I'm going to put a line in there. So that's where I am going to score my line. Right, so I'm going to use my score board. So let me bring that in. And I'll show you how I do that. Right, with my score tool, 
right okay I tend to go from the six inch mark um, no particular reason but just in the middle it gives me enough room both sides to work comfortably so what I need is to get that first pencil mark to line up here and then I'm going to have to remember that line you probably can't see this but from where I'm sitting there's a little bit of blue sparkle there so I know it's the groove next to it okay so bring that down in the four put that back into the groove by my blue bit of sparkle and then that goes back up there now I know that's both in the same groove line okay so holding it steady I am going to score down okay so I've got my top one one two three four top one one two three four so that's going to be my fold on my card so we don't need that anymore right so I'm oh let's move take those uh, marks off first right now I'm just going to fold those or that rather bring this one over so what I'm going to do is adhere it like that so that that bit then opens up but also I have this piece that needs to be adhered in here now at first I was going to cut that piece off in fact I did on my first one but I don't really think it's necessary if this is bought low enough the amount that's going behind this is so small it really isn't going to matter so I'm going to put this piece on first up to my base okay so this is the bottom not the one with the fold on it um, tweezers So I'm pulling this down more than I would if all of this was going to be visible. But this looks all about even. It is getting wider up there, but that's fine. I'm sure whoever receives this card isn't going to notice. And the other thing that I've forgotten to bring over, well I haven't, I've just left them out of reach, are my pegs once I've glued this I like to uh, get the pegs to hold it all together so I'm just putting some Tombow on this piece going close to the fold but not right on top of the fold otherwise it's going to ooze out and it'll stick too much down for you now I'm keeping this bit up out of the way whilst I line everything up go that's nice so can you see how much of the white is actually coming through there it's not a lot there we go so we've got that so what I do with my pegs is I just put them on like this just for a few minutes while I'm doing other jobs and that could be drying Right, okay, let's close that up. Let's get all the other bits over here. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adhere these two pieces together, um, deciding first if I want embossed or debossed. Um, I think I prefer embossed. Okay, so let's put the pink one on first. No, first of all, we've got to cut some of this off, haven't we? Right. What I decided was, if I left that one whole and it goes over the top there, as it opens, it's going to get a very unpleasant 
crease across there and also because there won't be much of this at the top bit that might actually start coming unglued um, and not look very good at all so let's just remove these I should have done it beforehand but never mind okay so this one I am putting in the center okay so that looks as if I've got the same amount of gap all the way round so what I'm going to do is I'm putting a little pencil mark at the bottom of this score line as you see it's like a little channel it's probably about 1 16th of an inch wide or something but I'm just putting it right at the bottom okay I'll put these back it's probably dried enough okay now but as I don't need to use it again it can sit over there right so what I will do is with my small ruler which is just dropped on the floor so I can't use my big ruler and I'll just draw those two lines together and then I am going to cut that bit off it's too small to worry about using my trimmer there we go it's such a small piece but you can understand why that could start popping up and being a bit of a nuisance right okay now this should fit on okay see the mount hanging over there now is so so tiny that will be all right to go onto our card base okay let's adhere these two together there we go now with this one I'm going to adhere my rose on there and I'm going to use my silicon mat and again I'm going to use Tombow if you're using a design here that's a directional design just make sure you've got it up the right way um, I think you need to look at your rows and decide if it looks upside down to you one way or the other um, it didn't look one way or the other to me um, but a gardener might notice if you've got your rose upside down right okay I've got a little bit of fluffy bits there there right and what I'm going to do to my rows see if they've got any fluffy bits no that's all right I think <laughs> I'm going to use a scrap of paper which I have here move that out of the way and that now with this one I coloured the frame here and the easy way to have done this would have been to have had another piece and die cut the rows again out of some crumb cake um, but that would create some wastage so something I don't like now I'm going to colour this using a marker you could use um, a dauber um, and then just sponge it um, because it, doing it this way is a little bit time consuming um, but I just feel that this is probably a bit more thorough it's easy to look at this and think that's too light I'm going to go over that again um, but you know it's one of those things it's a matter of choice And 
fact, maybe I should have got one of these prepared beforehand so that uh, you wouldn't have to sit there and wait for me to finish all of it. Although I do know some of you actually um, make the cards along with me, which means that's nice because if I'm doing something like this, it gives you a chance to uh, keep up with me too. There we go, it doesn't really take too long, but um, I just think the dauber would be quicker. I'm going over it again because I want it to come up a bit darker. If you go over this too much you may find that you need to put it on one side to allow it to dry. I mean our inks do dry more or less straight away. But if you put too many coats on obviously it will take a bit longer. Let's turn that around and do the other side. The card that's sitting by the side of me here that I showed you, that one I've done as a Mother's Day card. This one I'm going to do as a wedding card. don't have anybody in mind yet, but... I think spring is the time for most weddings. Right, now when you've done this, if you find that you've got white areas, if you tilt it, then just go over the edge with your marker. This is where the marker has the advantage over the uh, dauber. all done now. Difficult to see with the, the white underneath me. Oh, that's better. Right, that's going to be fine. So now I need this to be popped in here, make sure I know which way it's going, it's going to be exactly like that. So what I'll do is I'm going over this with a two-way glue pen, make sure I've got enough glue pumped down here. The reason this is called two-way glue pen is because if you paste glue onto um, something and then leave it to dry without actually attaching it to something, the glue will dry like post-it notes, um, you know, removable glue. There we go, that's that. What I tend to do is keep it tilted whilst I'm getting it fitted in there and then try and follow it around. There we go. It might need a little bit of encouragement to get right against the edge, but it's not difficult. There we go. Doesn't that look lovely? 
Right, okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going over that with my Wink of Stella. I could have done this before I adhered it in here, but I find it quite easy enough to do it while it's in situ. The only thing I would say is if you try doing this and you're using a colour, um, especially if you're doing like a red or the one that I did earlier which is rose red, um, the colour does run with Wink of Stella which is okay, it's just that when you're doing this you just have to make sure that you don't go over the edges because it would spoil the um, outline. It's amazing what difference this makes. This is a nice new pen as well, which is why it's uh, going on really quickly. I don't know whether you can actually see this on the screen. Right, that's that done. Let me hold it up, see if you can see it. Yes, you can, look at that. It's certainly worth the effort doing. Right, now I'm going to adhere this onto this. No, I'm not going to use that, am I? I'm going to use the uh, Tombow. Mind you, I could use that. So, which way did I want my rose? That way, I think. I've come over the edge a bit there. No, it's too late to worry about it now. Right, so there's that. I'm going to adhere it onto here now. Again with Tombow. lining this up just underneath the bottom of the score line there. Make sure it's all lined up beautifully. And then I'll put some diamante, uh, not diamante, rhinestones on there. And what I did with this was I started off with one of the large sizes. that in the centre and then one of the smaller ones either side coming down slightly and then one each of the no one of the smaller ones on each side rather There we go, there's that. And then I need my sentiment. Um, as I said on this one, I'm doing um, for newlyweds. This is it. This is from the um, Teeny Tiny Wishes. Well, I don't think they call it that nowadays. Mine's old enough to uh, still be going by the old name. This is a brilliant um, stamp set, this is. I've had this ever since I joined Stamping Up. There we go. I'm going to punch that out using the Word Window Punch. That's that one.
and then I'm going to punch out a piece of um, what did I do? The pink with the washi tape punch. Again, I'm not using the same as I've used here because the um, layer there, that's another retired product. I have to say, some of the stamping out products, I do have trouble giving them up when they retire. Right, so I'm going to just put some two egg glue pen on the back of this. into the centre. And then that can come on here. And I'm going to cut some small pieces of dimensionals. big actually. Okay, so what I've done is I've got one there, that bit there, and let's do one complete. It looks like a building to me these things, like factories will be on their sides. Right, okay. Oh, I've done that upside down. Right, can you get this up? Put it nice and slowly, yes. Right, let's pop it on the other side. And then the last thing I'm going to do is a bow. And this is the only retired product I allow myself to use doing videos, and that's ribbon. Um, you may have heard me say before that, uh, that you get so much ribbon on a reel from stamping up. I just can't get through all of it before it retires and another one comes out. Probably better the other way around, yes it is. Right, ribbon scissors. Oops, I don't need that now, do I? Recently I've been trying to make friends with blue dots for ribbons and things. Not doing too badly. But I do tend to use at least two though. That's one. over a bit please. That's better. There we go. 
So what do you think of that? You can see that uh, Wink of Stella pen has nearly run out. I don't know whether you can see from where you are. Let me show you. Um, we can't even see it on there, look. Oh, just about. But you can see there's lots on there. Beautiful. Okay, I'll just show you the other card that I made. Changed the colour slightly. Um, I used rose red here. The paper is from the old um, designer series paper stack um, from the, I think that was Subtle's collection, was it? I don't know. Anyway, and that's a very old ribbon, that one. This one says happy anniversary. So I got each occasion sorted. Hope you like my card um, and I hope you give it a try. Um, many thanks for watching my video today. If you have any questions, please contact me. I'm always very happy to help. Um, if you've enjoyed my video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. If you'd like to buy any of the products that I featured here today, please click on the 24-7 link that's in the details below and that will take you straight to my 24-7 online stamping up shop. Um, I will be posting all the measurements and the materials on the screen but I do know that depending what you're, what you're watching the video on they don't always appear so all the measurements and um, numbers and uh, catalogue numbers and everything will be in the details below. Um, so anyway, many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio.